Providing healthcare to people out here is harder than it is in the city. These guys, they have to climb up half a mountain, you know, walk for an hour to get to a main-ish gravel road, to then wait for a, a taxi, which is actually just a bucky with a canopy, pay a lot more money than they would in the city to get here. So trying to provide healthcare out here is harder. As a district hospital in our community, we are the only hospital patients can access healthcare at, and everything we do feels essential. With that in mind, we saw the disruptions in healthcare around the world, and we were sitting here thinking, oh my word, if that's coming this way, how are we going to keep providing care for those people if, if COVID throws us off here? And then, and then we had to prepare for what was going to happen. Um, how many people do we have in our community that actually access the hospital? You know, is the fact that most interactions happen outdoors here, is that going to reduce the risk of transmission? Um, we just couldn't anticipate it. We needed to try to figure out how to keep providing the services that we needed to provide for a desperate population, but create a whole new space, pretty much a whole new hospital for COVID and uh, we found government ready to respond to what we needed. The Department of Health helped by employing um, some nurses and general workers on contracts as well who ended up working in the COVID wards. I, I told myself, I was called to, to help people. That is what I'm gonna do. And it was very hard. It was very difficult. I think we admitted more than plus minus 500 patients here. We had to sit and do a lot of maths and realize that we actually didn't have enough oxygen because a, a high flow nasal prong device would use up to 60 liters of oxygen a minute, which would use very easily <laughs> like up to eight or more cylinders of oxygen a day. So if I've got one patient using eight cylinders a day and our bucky is only dropping off nine cylinders a day, that doesn't leave much oxygen for anyone else in the whole hospital. We, we wouldn't want a patient to die because we run out of oxygen. We would want to make decisions about how we can rationalize oxygen. Yeah, I, it, was, it was an issue of distributive justice. We, we had to sit and, and think about who we could give oxygen to and not. I mean, teamwork was was kind of at the heart of it all. For instance, here at our facility, we had a CEO who's just remarkable. Um, and he was the guy on the phone 24-7, making sure that we had two buckies available, um, drive to Mtata, collect oxygen, and bring it back here once or twice a day. We had to like carry the oxygen with the trolley, uh, lining up next to the patient uh, so that whenever the oxygen is finished, at least we have another one next to the patient. The patient doesn't suffer. We somehow managed to never actually run out, but there were a few times we were down to just a handful of cylinders for the whole hospital. Even though we didn't have you know, enough for everyone, even though we had limited resources, um, our, our nurses felt like they didn't have limited compassion. You would get three or four patients who are severely ill, who are on high volume oxygen. Immediately you start attending to this patient. The other patient is starting to complicate. You are here, the other nurse is there. On a single day, four days in the ward. It was very, very shocking and very difficult for us. I feel useless. I, I can't help this patient as much as I, I, I want to. I, I remember feeling quite responsible for what the nurses were going through um, and how we were making these decisions about end of life, but we weren't sitting there when, when the patients were dying. And uh, I think we are very grateful for our nurses. I've got no words to explain how supportive they were. They would like come in the ward every day just to check up on us. How are you doing now? Are you coping? Is there anything we can do to make things better for you? Yeah, they just stepped up and said, look, we've got the skill. Um, can we make a space for the nurses and for any staff um, to come in and, and share their experiences and kind of debrief? It, it just hit me very bad. Even when I'm dreaming, I would like dream about patients in the ward. Talking about what I'm experiencing, it helps me, but it took me about three to four weeks to recover. I was myself again. Yeah, they were amazing in their initiative and resourcefulness. Um, 